Hi traders, welcome to a live webinar with Admiral Markets. My name is Chris. Today's focus is on price action and patterns. Before we head off to the charts though, please be aware that this uh, webinar is shown to a global audience but may not be suitable for everyone. Please visit AdmiralMarketsGlobal.com, select your country of residence and contact an appropriate entity for more details. Also, please be aware that trading for exchange in global financial markets is considered higher risk. Please seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. This webinar is for informational and educational purposes only. By continuing watching this webinar, you agree with this disclaimer, and you are aware of the risk involved when trading. All right. As always, a quick look at the uh, interest rate. We had the Aussie staying flat. Uh, we have, of course, some other news events coming up today in Europe and the U.S., uh, among other things, uh, places, I should say. Uh, the red tag ones are the most important, but always be aware of, uh, of the full list, of course. You can see here on admiralmarkets.com, go to analytics and click on Forex calendar to see all of those events. Alrighty, <clears throat> excuse me. So good to see everyone. Hope you had a, a good start of the week. Hope you had a good weekend as well. Hi, Pep, good to see you. So uh, let's take a look at what's going on with the euro dollar, first of all. Uh, as always, a uh, good place to start. Then uh, we can take a look at the pound and dollar yen. Now, the, the euro dollar has been quite choppy, has been moving up, but slowly but surely, quite correctively to the upside. And it's been stopping at the, at the, at the resistance of these Fibonacci levels. Uh, you can see that price stopped originally at the 23.6 Fib. Stopped at the uh, 50, stopped at the 61.8, stopped at the 78.6 fib, and most recently stopped at the 88.6 fib. So respecting this particular fib very nicely, if it were to break above the 100 level, uh, it would invalidate uh, a bigger. Uh, it would invalidate first of all this fib, but also a bigger wave structure. Uh, so far, it has not done yet. So. This 88.6 fib could be the turning spot. Uh, now it depends if it's going to be able to break below support. Is it going to push enough sufficiently lower to uh, get a bearish, uh, a large bearish trend on its way? We already see lower lows and lower highs, as you can, as you can see. <clears throat> so there is already a start of a, a bearish channel, but we have to be careful of that because. You see that previous, uh, yeah, let's say bearish movements were corrections. This turned out to be a correction. This was a correction. This was a correction. This was a correction. Even this was a correction. So even though we had substantial serious downside at times, overall this particular motion was still present and, and strong. So we need to be aware that and careful that you know this particular retracement yet again does not turn into an upside continuation. We have to be uh, aware of this. So how do we know? Well, first of all, before I dive into that, uh, let me just add two things about this particular 88.6 Fib. You can see that we had a uh, almost looks like a head and shoulders. Just well, it kind of is, I guess, but not the perfect one. We also had a rising wedge, by the way, and we had divergence between these tops, plus a strong fib. So I just want to, <clears throat> in retrospect, show you here uh, some signals why I thought it was likely that this particular point the price could turn and why the price could turn here as well, by the way, and here. All right, because we were at multiple things were showing potential turnaround. All right, so next question. Let's put a fit from here to here. All right. So you see that there was a, a deep retracement. That's that's fine. It didn't break below above this uh, origin, the top of this uh, bearish movement. So we're seeing a, a bearish decline. Now the question is if this is a correction or if this is a strong momentum. So if this is a correction, price would. Uh, typically go to the long-term moving average or just below it, either to the minus 2 or the minus 61 point target, and then turn back up again. 
if it is a trend, it should keep pushing lower and should break below the moving average and should keep pushing uh, further. <clears throat> this long term moving average basically price should below break below it eventually if it is a bearish uh, trend and this is not a bearish reversal. Uh, this is not a bearish retracement. Sorry. So we have to see how price respects and responds to these targets. If there is a bear flag, then there's a good chance of a break and continuation like this. If, however, there's engulfing twins today, engulfing this four-hour candle, well, then there's a good chance that this was just a correction and price might continue higher again. So one thing to keep an eye on are these FIB targets. Another thing to keep an eye on is this trend line like this. We already broke this trend line. We can take it away. Uh, but this resistance trend line, or we could even do it like this, like that, <clears throat> that would be an, an indication that the bearish trend is not starting, and uh, this was just a correction. So time will tell. At this moment, price is right at the minus 272 target. We can zoom into an hourly chart like this. And uh, if this is a strong trend, what I would expect basically is maybe a bit of sideways movement here at the 272 target, one or two hours, but then it should break below and it should continue like this to the to lower uh, levels. All right. So um, we could put a fib. Let's see. One second. We could put another fib from here to here. All right, we see 272 targets right there. One second. All right. No, that's not the one I wanted to do. Sorry. Let's see. We need to go to a 50-minute chart. One second, folks. And we need to find the best fib for this particular 50 minute world, I think it's probably this. All right, there we go. Let me make that a bit different color. All right, good. So let's say price will be stopping at the minus 272 target and making a bear flag, right? How far should it retrace before we might question whether this is a bear flag or not? The 38 or max 50, right, that's where it should stop. So if we get a bear flag, it could stop at the 23.6 or 38.2, the very max, the 55. I wouldn't expect it to go that deep. So a retracement, mild correction like this uh, over the next one hour, two hours, up to this fib, and then a turnaround, a continuation like this is what I would be interested in personally in trading. <clears throat> In that case, price should follow to the minus 61.8 target. You can see here there's a confluence, two minus 61.8 targets at 106.40. I could go further than that, don't get me wrong, but that would be the, the main first target. Uh, if it is going to go further, uh, something like this, for instance, right? Like that. Now, that depends on how price will respond at this target, whether this is just still a correction, an ABC correction, if it goes beyond the minus 61.8 target, then it starts to more look like a 1, 2, and a wave 3. And then it could it accelerate down to lower levels, to these targets. So keep an eye on this one as well. If price does make this bear flag and does break lower, then I'm keeping an eye on the next target to see how it responds. If there's a strong reaction, then um, that's, that's it of the bearish move. If we get another bull bear flag or small movement, <clears throat> there could be one more push through, or not one more, there could be several push throughs. In that case, this is a wave three probably. And eventually when this wave three rides out, there'll be a wave four and another wave five. And that could happen several times. So it's a it's an interesting spot, I think, because it could be very close to uh, a wave three. And wave threes are exciting because those have potentially always the 
yeah, those make the, the strongest movements, they make the most gains in the quickest time possible. It's always impulsive, it's always quick. So those are very interesting parts to potentially catch. So if there is a wave three, uh, and or there is a potential wave three, then that's something to keep an eye on, I think. And it's always very interesting to to see if, if that does develop because yeah, there's there could be a lot of uh, push on that on that movement. So that's very interesting, I think. Now whether we'll get that, I, I don't know. It, it I just laying out here these scenarios that I think are interesting. I'll let price decide what it wants to do. Uh, I do think that there's a decent chance that that could happen. You know, this trend has been choppy to the upside. It has tested a high resistance, but not breaking it. It is breaking through this support level, which could indicate, uh, and the moving average potentially here, which could indicate that price might at least test these support levels and these bottoms. So there's got some good space down to that bottom and that support level. <clears throat> so I, yeah, I do think there's a good chance that might happen. But my point was that uh, price will confirm that. Price will show that. Uh, and I'll wait for that. So I do have uh, my analysis set up, but I'm not, I'm not, uh, let's say, uh, uh, if, it, if, if this scenario does not happen, it is not earth shocking or not, not uh, totally, you know, destructing my <laughs> view of the markets, right? Because that's sometimes what happens when traders set up a, a bias and analysis that gets so tied to it, they get so engaged with it that it has to happen. But really, of course, nothing has to happen. It's, we traders should follow the price. We should be reactive and re show reactions to what's happening, but not um, only base our analysis on predictions. So we got to find that middle ground there. So if it does blast through this minus 272 target, by the way, then I'm not in that boat because I need to see some, some small correction first before I, I, I want to trade it. Otherwise, from my perspective, an entry below the minus 272 target with a stop loss above the, above the top and a target so close by is not a good reward to risk. <clears throat> so for me, that's not interesting. I need to see some consolidation, even on a 15 or 5 in the chart, just a small one. So I know that I can use uh, a tighter stop loss here as it makes a correction like this, right? I can take the, the stop loss above the 38, the 50 fib here, and then enter uh, around here and target here. That is a good reward to risk. This is the risk. This is the reward in that case. All right, that's about it, I guess. Uh, got a question from Z10. I have a problem determining whether a fit point is retracement, is a bounce, or a continuation. So uh, let me think for a second here. Well, uh, a retracement is is always a potential bounce spot, right? So. This, these fibs are potential bounce spots if you put a fib from here to here. If that's what your analysis says, that this could be an ABC correction, then those fibs will be resistant. So that's a bounce spot. Uh, the targets are also uh, potential bounce spots. It depends how price responds to it. If it. This is a potential bounce or break spot, right? It could bounce, it could break. It's the same as true for fibs, in fact. It could bounce at the 50 or break and go to the next 50. Each of these fibs are bounce and break spots in a way. Uh, continuation only happens, basically, if, if price stops at the 61.8 and then breaks below this support, then you get a continuation, right? This is the, let's say, the break. This is the pullback. And you get the continuation. But the continuation never really happens at the FIB. The FIB is always a bounce or break spot, these FIB levels. I mean, we're mincing words here in a way because, of course, you could say it continues lower if it breaks below the minus 272 target. So whether you say it breaks or continues, 
you know, it's, I don't think it really matters that much, but from that point of view. I'm not sure if that is exactly the question you, you had in mind. But let me know if you have a follow-up, okay? So, the pound. Uh, and by the way, regarding intraday trading, um, I'm working on uh, several things, actually quite busy at the moment. Uh, one is uh, a time, fractal, time pattern fractal uh, indicator NEA. Uh, the other is uh, an intraday trading system. I've always been more of a swing trader on the hourly and four-hour chart and was looking for developing a method that I liked that uses multiple time frames without me having to switch all the time for multiple time frames. Uh, and I've, I've now it's pretty close to, I'm still testing, but I'm very happy at the moment. Um, it's, it's traded on a 50-minute chart. So, for instance, it generated signals. Let's see. Here. Here, this candle, a short. And here and here. All right now, not everyone has to be taken, obviously, but I'm pretty happy with uh, with with those uh, with those results. Uh, and it, it's interesting how it nicely avoided what I what I like a lot is how it nicely avoided, for instance, uh, a potential. I mean, you could easily, you know, potentially see a system generating a signal here, for instance, right? Um, and here. Because those are, <clears throat> those look like, this looks like a correction and a continuation. Correction and continuation, doesn't it? You see the difference? It's difficult to tell. I, I mean, now we see that, right? But it is difficult to tell. I mean, these are, we can see that the momentum is down at this point. Let me get rid of the mini terminal for a second, which is part of the, part of the meditative force supreme edition, right? So we see that the momentum is down. So how do we know that this is not, this is not ready, for instance, right? Uh, and this is ready. So this that system manages the system I made manages to do that. It, this were invalidated, and these were were good ones. So I'm I'm really happy at the moment. I still need to do some more testing. But, uh, and let me check up in here. All right, that was a good signal. I mean, I mean that was a successful signal, right? But uh, was not it was not a good one according to my system. All right, so it was a bit more. This one would have worked out fine, but was in, invalidated because of uh, it didn't line up. So yeah, I think pretty nicely so far. Let's see, Polly is the. Pound is surprising me a bit <clears throat> because it keeps pushing. It it had already plenty of divergence here, uh, enough for for me to expect a break towards uh, the fibs. All right, but it didn't do that. It, it continued broke support here and uh, didn't make the upside, making the downside. So. Bit surprised by that, but I am not a big fan of, of trading this particular pound USD to the downside. I, it could find some acceleration, don't get me wrong. If it breaks below this bottom, it 
it is showing some good uh, good steam at the moment. But I would definitely need a retracement. Some kind of, even on a 50-minute chart. It doesn't have to be that fancy. This one-hour candle closing near the, near the low, closing below this, this low, this bottom, is important at the end of the hour. And I would need to see some kind of mild correction here before taking it uh, lower. Too much divergence, uh, but doesn't mean it cannot continue and hit the minus 272 target. All right, so I'll keep an eye on this hourly candle. I'll keep an eye on small 550-minute bro bear flags, and then there is that potential for a continuation push. But ultimately, eventually, I guess there's one more push going on, as we can see. But eventually, I would expect uh, a bigger correction uh, back to, let's take a look, when, when this move finishes, back to, let's say, the 50 fib, right? In a, in a three-wave move like that, and then a continuation lower. All right, but time will tell. It's, uh, this is what I expect at the moment. Uh, but sometimes these currencies, they can keep pushing, and we don't get a, a bigger retracement. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, it all depends on how price does respond to this minus 272 target. Uh, for me to trade anything to the upside, I would need to see strong momentum here. I would need to see a correction, mouth correction, and then there's a good chance of an ABC zigzag. For the moment, though, looking for a good candle and looking for a bear flag is, is more important. Um, and let's see, it's already pushed a lot just in these few minutes, actually. Well, if it keeps pushing, uh, let me move the fit back again. One second. If it just keeps falling, I would not be interested. That's too late. Uh, in my view. Um, the For an intraday perspective, unfortunately, folks, we're too late. At this moment, we're too late. Uh, my system generated a entry eight fifteen. This candle right here, break up on the pivot point. Now it's just falling and falling, so it's unfortunately not a good time now to, to jump in. We need a bit of retracement. All right, dollar yen um, is moving up pretty strongly here. So this bearish scenario is probably, uh, oh, the pound just fell really a lot, by the way. Let's take a look. And in a flash, it was about 30 pips lower all of a sudden on my other screen. I'm looking at two screens, of course. So yeah, this this is good for later on. If it's that much momentum, it will definitely make a broader flag, and you'll definitely see uh, this go back to the zero line, and you'll see a continuation at least one more time. So the stronger the momentum here, the more likely you'll get a bear flag and a continuation. Uh, if you don't get a bear flag, it seems unlikely, but if you get a push, and suddenly you get a very strong rise like this. It's like a V valley like that. Don't even think about shorting it, all right? Because in that case, it's a, it's a close and reverse. It's very, very important to see a bear flag here. If you didn't trade it upon here, or maybe even here, although uh, personally I wasn't looking at five-minute charts, 
Uh, I was looking at 15, and from a 15 perspective, uh, there was no correction here. It was only here. Uh, so if you didn't catch this one, it, it's really too late. It's better to wait for correction. The dollar yen, in any case, um, is giving more bullishness than I expected. So it seems that the bearish scenario is definitely not that strong. I was thinking it could be accelerating because of the break here. This looks like a bear flag, and we could see a follow through to that. And uh, that seems less likely. Now, I'd still keep an eye on the R1 and 112.50. That seems to be a, a break or bounce spot, a key, key decision spot, because if it turns there, it could still fall down to 110. If it breaks above it, then it's probably pretty likely to go up to the R2 and R3, and there'll be a bullish break, maybe some correction and continuation. So I'm keeping a strong eye on 112.50 and what kind of candles appear on this hourly chart at 112.50. Uh, let's see, Zitan has a follow-up question, 61.8. Do you mean this fib, Z10? Can you confirm that uh, you were looking at this fib? Generally, though, be aware that uh, not all fib levels will see a bounce. So there are bounce or break spots. Most strong fibs will see some type of a bounce. We'll see a little, some reaction. Uh, but not all fibs will be respected. Here you can see the price just blasted through the 23.6 fib on this chart. But maybe on the lower time frame, there was a reaction. It did bounce at the 38.2 fib, but only a little bit before moving to the 50. Actually, at the 50, it got the biggest reaction. So what type of reaction, what type of a bounce uh, is, depends from fib to fib and from case to case. So if you did look at this fib, for instance, you saw that here there was a strong candle uh, approaching the, the 61.8. So typically when you get strong candles approaching a fib, the fib doesn't hold. We get a bit of correction, but you get the break. So it's good to look at candles. How strong are the candles? Is the candle closed in the higher low? That will give you an indication about whether uh, there will be a bounce or a break. So there was a slight pause at the 61.8 fib, but then a break through it. And it has partly to do with the momentum in the candles. Uh, this small white candle, uh, is I think too weak. Yeah. I mean, it's, that's something of course that, um, uh, that's not as easy to, to do when live. So I can, I can imagine, and there's nothing wrong with taking a trade, uh, that didn't work out. Those things happen. That's part of trading. So I wouldn't beat yourself up on it. Uh, in retrospect, maybe you can you can say, okay, this was maybe a, a tad too little. The white, I mean, it's a bullish candle, but uh, the candle there's a wick on top, small body here. It's quite a weak candle in comparison to the strong bearish candle. So that's maybe something you know to 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 take away from a learning point from 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 that trade. I would think. Personally, I always look at the strength of, of the candle when the momentum in that candle when approaching it. Uh, what, I, whether this is a good fib, uh, Eagleus is, is asking, 
uh, whether we'll bounce at the 78.6 fib is a good question. I, we need to look a bit uh, at higher time frames to to get a sense of that. Um, we see that there was strong momentum here on the daily chart after a strong downtrend, by the way. And uh, we see that price stopped near the 50 fib. So this could be a, a bounce, break, continue, or some triangle formation uh, could be developing as well uh, on, at uh, this point. So yeah, there is a potential. I, I don't know if it's uh, how strong that possibility is, to be honest, but it could be building a triangle like this. So yeah, these deep fibs, I think there is a, is a possibility, a real possibility. Uh, I would not probably put a pending order there. I, I do like deep fibs. I know the pound likes deep fibs. So it's certainly not a strange thought to put a pending order at those levels and put the stop loss below this bottom. And if you like swing trades, it could be a serious thing to think about. I'm not a big fan of pending orders unless it's, let's say the case is uh, doubly strong. So I probably will not do that. I would probably rather wait for candlestick reactions at that uh, deeper fib. So there's a serious uh, potential there indeed that there could be a bounce. It also depends on, once again, from my perspective, the most important of these four hour candles as they approach these levels. For the moment, there's still space down to those fib support levels. <clears throat> so there could be a continuation. Here too, uh, let's see. Uh, this particular pound yen, I did not have a signal. in recent uh, time. Let's see, this was a bit too much of a correction. Let's see. The most recent signal I had was this candle sorry this one of course uh, break of that small correction and continuation uh, but I think with this momentum uh, there could be a new one I think that uh, Let's see, 138.20 is pretty close by, 138.20, 38.50. Yeah, there would have to be, I would like to see price hit 138.50, make a small bear flag, and then turn, and it, there's some space down to 138.20. That's the only way it, it could make some space. If it goes below 138.50, then it's already getting too close to this target, really. So if it's if it continues like this, stays above 138.50, reacts to 138.50, makes a bit of a bear flag like that, there could be one more fall within this uh, pretty extensive and large channel. All right, um, what else?
All right, your yen accelerating below the third level, one, two, three. And that's typically when you get the most power between three, four, and then the fourth and the fifth level. So there's still some space left, I think, to the downside for the moment. If we put a fib from here to here, uh, we are at the minus 61.8 target, so there's a bit of a, a potential for a bounce. I think there could be a, a reaction to the minus 272 or the, the fourth level, and we should see then a fall, I would say, to the fifth level in the minus 1,000 target. That's what I would be expecting. I would like to see a mild correction probably on the hourly chart here, like that. Uh, it, is it worth buying here because it's at a target? Sometimes it is. Uh, let's take a look at higher time frames to, to check that out a bit better. It's back to the lock to moving average. Yeah, it. Uh, it could be worth it, but if it's done, if a reversal trade is taking at this target, then you got to be aware that it could go nowhere and correct like this, or it could even break immediately. So it's a high risk. If it does go flat like that, then get out of it. That's not a good development. Um, I personally would not do it. I'm not a big fan of reversal trades, so that might not surprise you. Um, I don't think there are strong enough arguments to to take a reversal trade right there I would probably need to see at the very minimum some some good momentum spike or for me to be bullish probably need to break above this resistance trailing until that moment I think that this would be a mild correction, which is actually good for one more follow through. Yeah, one twenty, one twenty, sixteen. Those could be resistance spots. Alrighty, uh, what else? I'm not a big fan of the Aussie at the moment. Looks like I had his shoulders actually at this moment. Sorry, all right, let me do the other trading here. Uh, and it seems to be breaking lower. It, I don't know, it kind of looks messy to me personally, so I don't have any particular trade idea in mind. I guess if this is engulfing twin like this, from a four-hour perspective, that could be pretty interesting. There's a lot of space down to the moving average. There is divergence between these tops. So engulfing twin here could see the follow-through to the downside. That might be something to think about for myself. Uh, Kiwi, choppy, but still trending, still in this trend. Maybe look at the daily chart. A big candle like this, a big uh, pin bar like that, could be a good signal, a reversal signal for some correction on, on the Kiwi. Uh, let's see, what else? Your odd. Not too sure about this one personally.
let me uh, redo this uh, fib tool here. One, two, three, four, five. It's already below the fifth. Some still some small space down to the sixth. It probably will follow the other pounds and make some weakness here. There is still some space. Let me take a look at uh, pound odd quickly on the other chart here. It will probably follow the other pounds, but I'm not particularly sure if this, this one is that much more interesting than the pound usually, for instance. So let's, I mean, if the Aussie is weakening, depends on this engulfing twin, I guess. If this is engulfing twin, we would expect a bit more Aussie weakness than dollar weakness. If there's more Aussie weakness, uh, that means that pound dollar would not move as far as pound dollar. So I think still from that perspective, if the Aussie engulfing twins hold, bearish engulfing twins, probably the pound USD looks a bit better than the pound dot. <clears throat> Although this could still move choppily lower, but same same scenario probably, bear flag continue. Um, all right, I think we've, Work down our the list uh, from a currency's perspective. This is still in a range down New Zealand. Let's take a look, perhaps at some others. Like gold, for instance. I think what we're seeing here is a five wave completed. Thirty-eight point two bounce. This looks pretty choppy. I'm not sure if this fifth wave is completed yet. Uh, this was a pretty strong pullback, so that's a bit confusing. Um, this was a pretty shallow pullback, so it is not that clear what part is the wave three. It would probably have to be this wave three. This is maybe a, a deep wave four. It didn't go into wave one territory. It didn't go into this this top. It's not perfect, but I guess we'll have to do. Uh, so the question is, I think there could be one more push up. If this is a wave three of five, if this is wave four, this could be wave five. Within wave five, there could be a wave one, two, this could be a three, but let me check. Yeah, the wave three is longer than the wave one. Funny, it doesn't look that way, but it is. Let me double check that. It's difficult to believe almost. Yeah, but it really is longer. Okay. If that is true, the main target looks like it's the minus 272 target at 1246. If this is a wave four, it should not go back into the territory of wave one. Probably should bounce to the 23.6 fib at the very max, the 38.2. Otherwise, it is invalidated. What I'm thinking as this is a wave three, four out of a wave five and then a bigger wave five. That should then complete a bigger wave one. Five out of five completes a bigger wave one and we should expect then a move down. Or A, by the way, and we should expect a pretty substantial ABC zigzag down for two or B. That's what I'm expecting. That's gold. Uh, let's see. S&P 500.
keeps pushing, starting to look a bit like a rising wedge perhaps, but all, all in all, the momentum is still there, really on the weekly chart, it is still there. Um, and it is, keep, it is pushing, pushing every week, has higher highs almost, not every week, but most of them. So I would really, for me to be more bearish on the S&P 500 to expect more um, reversal potential, I would need to see five to six weeks, some momentum candle like this, for instance, then a hook back five to six weeks, not breaking this top. Then let's talk about potential uh, bigger retracements. Until that moment, I don't think it's, it's going to happen. It doesn't seem like it's happening. All right. Uh, any, any questions from you? What we discussed, anything maybe you want to revisit, look at for the first time, maybe I missed something. In the meantime, Nenet is going to take a look at money management tomorrow. Tomorrow, I take a look at Fibonacci waves with you, hopefully. You'll be back tomorrow. And Thursday, we take a look at how spreads impact trading. So that's still remaining this week. Next week, we have the usual webinars, of course, again, uh, the lineup with... Um, Let's see, we'll take a look at gold, short and long-term analysis and trading of gold. It doesn't show it, but this is a gold webinar, February 16th. Hope to see you there. Of course, when you check out the website, you can also take a look at not only education and webinars, but you get articles, you have analytics, and, it, uh, and I talk about uh, topics here in articles, heat maps, but also platforms. You have WebTrader, which is a browser-based, but of course also Supreme Edition. So a lot of things to discover here. All right, pound USD really fell a lot, and uh, I think that it's, yeah, it fell right to the target. So this is uh, a bit annoying, but those things happen. It has already hit the target. Now, it depends on how this hourly candle, so yeah, that, that you know, that, that's, unfortunately, we just were in the webinar here. That was my uh, signal for my system, breakout system. At this moment, it depends whether the hourly holds. If the hourly closes like this, let's keep an eye on this hourly candle, because if it closes like this, there's a pretty good chance of a follow-through after uh, some bear flag on the 5 or 50-minute chart. Although it already basically has eaten up most of the, the space so from an intraday perspective, it has already hit S3, for instance, right? So that's one thing to be very cautious of. It already has moved so much, and it has hit the fifth target, that that might be it for the downside today. All right? So that's good to keep an eye on this hourly candle. If it if the hourly candle ends up somewhere in here as a close, it's probably not going to continue lower anymore. And there might be some correction like this, or there might be maybe even a, a zigzag. If the candle does close near the low, then maybe the, the currency will travel further than uh, today, as an exception. might travel further than its typical range. Some small bear flag and could make one more push down. All right, folks. That's it. We can view it tomorrow again, see uh, and, and try to learn from uh, what happened today. Hope that you have good trading. Be careful of this pound uh, as it gets closer to a potential bouncing spot, but uh, I think that this hourly could be very valuable. Hope to see you tomorrow. Tomorrow we take a look at Fibonacci and Waves, and uh, see you soon. Cheers.